I'm Mark Bindu with the LA Times Lakers blog. Standing here at Staples Center for the Lakers came off 114-106 victory over the Houston Rockets. It ended their two-game losing streak. You know, it eased a little bit of the anxiety from Laker fans and also uh, continued, um, you know, in halting a, an inconsistent pattern where they kept going back and forth in terms of getting a quality win and then losing, a, you know, in a devastating game afterwards. The Lakers have a lot to work on for the fact that this game really shouldn't have been close, um, you know, just because of the Houston Rockets record. But the Lakers came out on top in their first overtime game of the season. It featured lots of ball movement and a lot of contributions from everyone, you know, all over the team, ranging from Kobe Bryant to Pal Gasol, Lamar Odom. Uh, they were able to get a lot of defensive stops that create a lot of momentum. And that really contrasted toward the end of the game where Kobe Bryant kind of took it on his own again, shooting uh, and missed two consecutive uh, jumpers despite Lamar Odom being open. But the rest of the game signified a much better effort in just trying to create more ball movement. Now, I mentioned earlier against the Boston Celtics, Kobe Bryant scored 41 points. I actually thought it was warranted because there wasn't a lot of aggression from the Lakers front line of Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum. And the Lakers just weren't shooting well from the field. Derek Fisher and Ron Artest. Uh, Ron went 1 of 10 from the field. Derek Fisher went 1 of 6. That improved a lot tonight where Ron Artest went 4 of 8 from the field. Derek Fisher went 3 of 4. So Kobe Bryant felt a lot more compelled to be able to pass the ball. He had 7 assists in the first quarter. And that really, I think, set the tone offensively where everyone just felt engaged. Kobe Bryant was able to get his points. Uh, you know, 32 overall, 13 to 25 from the field, but so did a lot of other people. Pau Gasol got 26 points on 10 to 20 shooting, had 16 rebounds. Lamar Odom filling in for Andrew Bynum, who suffered a left knee injury. They determined that he had a bone bruise there, um, so Lamar started in his place, and he scored 20 points on 8 of 18 shooting and 20 rebounds. Phil Jackson said afterwards that he felt like Lamar had a little bit of uh, a lapse in focus in the first half but was really able to, to shift gears and, and change his aggression in play in the second half, and that really paid off. Now, some good news. I talked to Andrew Bynum briefly outside the Lakers locker room. He said that his knee feels fine. He feels like he'll be able to play Thursday against San Antonio. And then all this is in a backdrop with some comments that uh, Mitch Kupchak made to one of my colleagues, Brad Turner with the LA Times and NBA.com Scott Howard Cooper that with all the struggles the Lakers are going through with their inconsistency, he was very open to making a trade. Phil Jackson was asked about it during shoot around and before the game. He didn't necessarily think the team needed a trade, but he understood the thought process behind it. Magic Johnson, on the other hand, thought that a move might be necessary because of the Lakers' poor record against some of the elite teams, such as the San Antonio Spurs, Miami Heat, and Boston Celtics. And while you know it's hard to really say that the Lakers, you know, felt motivated by it, I'm sure it, you know, it woke their eyes up a little bit. But as far as their play on the court, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I mean, they had stretches and, and lapses where they weren't guarding the perimeter. Kevin Martin was really just lighting up from the outside, scoring 30 points on AF 15 shooting, including a 4 of 8 mark from three-point range. But the Lakers were at least able to grind out a win. They experienced some adversity, and they wound up on top. But the Lakers very well know that a lot tougher terrain awaits. They play San Antonio on Thursday. They have the best record in the Western Conference. Then they have a seven-game trip that includes the likes, you know, some 500 opponents, some 500 opponents, but also includes the likes of New Orleans, of Boston, New York, Orlando. There's going to be a lot more tougher tests for the Lakers to navigate, but it's going to be all about trying to develop and, you know, show incremental improvement from here on out.